scrubs are definitely fitted to our bodies. They didn't just come out of the, you know, out of the store like this. <laughs> Even though they're buying, they're wearing off the rack uniforms, they've all been custom fit to each one of them. Getting to wear scrubs every day to work, I, I feel like I'm in pajamas and I'm so happy. Patrick, you know, does things like, you know, brings them in on the waist and the, the sleeves are perfectly cut at our biceps and, you know, like all those kinds of things. So it's tailoring, really. They have to be practical because there is a lot of movement. Like it's an action packed hospital drama that we're doing. Like there's a lot of movement. I know how to do cheats with elastics and like pinning in here and whatever so that when you stand there, your clothes go back into shape. But there'll be hidden panels here and there so that they can have the movement. They're very, very meticulous with how we look, which is wonderful. It's great to be taken care of in that way. I have been in costume for 25 years, and even when I was younger and learning, what I found from my mentors, the people that I was most impressed with, was how they were making characters, not clothing. What's Cutler's look, and how is he distinct? Well, he wears these super, super sweet arm spanks. They're actually like, they actually don't go up all the way. They look like it, but check this out. It's a trick. It's a trick. We did this to get some kind of separation between all the, the doctors in the ER. But uh, Patrick was nice enough to to hook me up with this look because he knows that me, Niall, I get I get really hot. I overheat, and in this studio, it, it gets really warm. So Patrick came up with a really cool way of of satisfying the look on the show and satisfying me as the actor without m making me overheat because these scenes are quite intense. So I think he did a great job. This is kind of for me. You know, taking this off, he's not Griffin, putting it on, he's Griffin. It's as, as lame as that sounds, I kind of find the necklace to be kind of the touchstone of Griffin, I guess. I mean, he's a ridiculously good-looking fellow with a great body, so there's not a thing that doesn't look good on him. Uh, I won't give anything away, but does it go from dark to light, or does it go from light to dark? Well, it does one of the two, and we've decided to actually tell the story through clothes by doing it the opposite way. So the part of him, when things are clean and good, is actually when he'll be dressed in darker colors. And as things control, get out of control or he starts to delve into things he might not have done, that's when he gives the appearance of being better put together. And I think we all kind of play that game, you know? If we've got something to hide, that's the day that you brush your hair and make sure you look good. Um, I had this thing with my shoes. I get to wear these, like, can you see them? These, like, <laughs> funky sort of leather, um, Converse looking shoes and when Patrick had them out at the beginning of the season and I got to choose I was like those ones those are totally Zoe because they're cool. They're not expensive. Zoe doesn't have money You know she can't possibly afford you know really cool funky shoes So she funks up everything that she can Both with Griff and Zoe. I think it's really important that they don't change they haven't had a revelation happened between that six month break that's happened, except that they get together a little more solid as a couple. Um, and sure. both Janelle and Dylan are more than happy to wear some of the clothes from last year. So this isn't a budget saving method. This is the fact that if you're that hardcore of a fan, you're going to see that they're actually wearing some of the clothes that they wore from years before. Sandy is always wearing this necklace. I have these earrings and I wear them pretty much every episode. And if you look closely, Sarah's pendant matches these exactly. Between myself and the two Sarahs who play Mel and Sandy, um, I came up with an idea of jewelry uh, set from the 1920s that I actually had in my family. So we kind of copied that and we put the necklace on Sandy and the earrings on Mel. And so an astute viewer will see that they're always wearing the same jewelry. And it's just a backstory we made up ourselves that this is their grandmother's, and it comes from their mother's side of the family. And there's not a line in any of the scripts so far, or probably in the future, that will ever say that. But it is a little bit that the actors can carry with themselves to know that they're always under the pressure of family. I'm a costume designer. I'm here to help the actor tell their story. I wouldn't say it's a big challenge. It's, it's a matter of holding myself back from making every day player into this extreme character. Because if we look around the room, if you look on the street, the world is not populated with iconic figures of each kind. So it's about dressing them in such a way that it tells a bit about perhaps their socioeconomic background or what the um, history of that patient, whether they're a long-term illness or whether it's an ER situation. Enough detail to give you the background that it will coincide with what the plot is about. I'm here to make Greg's show as deep and multi-leveled as possible. And those tiny little details are what do it.